Uh, for tools, we have a Phillips screwdriver and a hand driver with an eight millimeter nut driver attachment. We have our upper mount, our lower mount, and our turn signal module. So first we're gonna install our turn signal module. We're gonna pop this into place here. So we've got some different size hardware that comes in the box. We've got our two longer bolts and nuts that's gonna be for the turn signal module. We're gonna use that now. We're gonna put our second bolt in, finger tight nut. Use our number two Phillips screwdriver. Just go ahead and get that nice and tight. You don't wanna over tighten this, you don't really need to. Next, we're gonna install our top mount. Now you, you'll notice there's a guide pin here. You can match that up with the center hole. Set this down on its face. We're gonna use two of our smaller Phillips screws. Now we're gonna install our lower mount. Same thing, we've got a center guide here. We're gonna match that up. We're gonna use our last two small Phillips screws. The one thing I wanna point out is even though these parts all are able to be separated, this is still really sturdy feeling after it's put together. All right, the last thing we need to do is plug in our turn signal module. Now you'll see that there's two cables here. We've got two different style plugs, so you really can't mess this up. We're gonna take our female cable from the headlight and we're gonna plug that into the male cable for the turn signal module. You wanna make sure that you line these two arrows up. You'll see that there's keyways here. You need those to match. We're gonna tighten down our cap. That's gonna make this completely waterproof. All right, so here's what both headlights should look like when they're fully assembled. Uh, you'll notice that the top and bottom mounts are both etched, indicating which side they belong to. The turn signal modules, you're gonna wanna make sure that those are mounted with the mount ears up. Now we're gonna get these over to the truck and get them installed. All right, so first we need to pull the core support panel. There's eight push clips holding that in. We're gonna use our panel tool. We're gonna pull off the core support panel along with the intake. Just give that a nice firm tug that comes right off. Set it to the side. So now with those four 10 millimeter bolts removed, the grill's just held in with push clips. So we just need to give this a couple of firm tugs. Tug on the right. So we're gonna pull the grill away and set it to the side. We're gonna set our right hand side marker in, T25 screws back in. We don't need to over tighten these. All right, and go ahead and install the other side the exact same way. So now that the grill's off, we also need to pull off this lower trim panel. We're gonna unlatch the fender. Pull that to the side. We're gonna slightly pull out from the side. We're gonna unclip the center. Same thing on this side. Loosen the fender. Pull this out from the side. Unclip. Go ahead and pull this out. Now with those bolts loose, we're gonna give the headlight a firm tug. We're gonna go ahead and unplug the connector from the back. So first thing we need to do is plug our headlight connector in. Now we're gonna set our headlight in place. And we wanna make sure that we leave this cable off to the side so we can plug our side marker in. So we've got our first 10 mil in. Now we're going to put in our bottom eight millimeter. And lastly, we're going to put our push clip back in. So now that we've got the driver's side headlight in, we're going to repeat the same exact steps on the passenger side. All right, so now we're going to install the BC2. Let's get at it. So first we're going to disconnect the positive side. 
and uh, connect our positive from our BC tube to the positive of the battery. Don't All right, so next we're gonna hook up the battery negative to the negative side of the DC2 controller. And whenever hooking up electric components, you always wanna start with a positive first. And hook your ground up last. And they do that because the positive side likes to arc. So now we're gonna go ahead and hook up our outputs uh, from the BC2 to the inputs of the headlights. And if you look at the input wires, coming off of the back of the uh, headlights, you'll see the tags labeling them, inner halo, outer halo, and demon eye. So we got our extensions plugged into the inputs of the headlight, and then we're gonna run these all the way across to the side that our battery is on. And once we get them over here, we're just gonna go ahead and hook them up, lining up the arrows to make sure they're indexed correctly. That way they all function the same. And that's our install. So now you want to go ahead and tuck away and run away any wires and uh, make it as neat as possible. All right, so just as with replacing any new headlight in any vehicle, uh, we need to check the aim. As you can see on the wall here, the driver's side cutoff line is a little bit higher than the passenger side. So we're gonna go ahead and just completely re-aim both headlights to spec. We're gonna show you how to take some measurements now. All right, so we're gonna measure from the ground to the center of the headlight. That gives us 43 inches. Now, your Bronco might be different depending on what size tires or you know how big of a lift you're running. Uh, we're lifted with 38s and we're at 43 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that on the wall, that same measurement with tape. And that's gonna be the line that we adjust both cutoff lines to. So with the lower trim removed, we can access the back of both headlights. So you're gonna reach in here, you're gonna feel for the rubber cap in the center of the headlight. We're gonna remove that. Now we're gonna take our supplied Allen tool, we're gonna get that fit in our bolt. All right, so the driver's side's a little high, so we need that to come down. So we're gonna turn our bolt slightly clockwise, just until we get our center cutoff line to meet the tape. Now we're gonna put our cap back on and move over to the other side. Now I can see that this passenger side headlight is a little low, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that one up slightly. All right, so we've got our headlights aimed and ready to go. This is what your beam pattern should look like in order to be road legal in the US. So we're gonna put the lower trim back on, gonna line that center pin up. Go ahead and get these pushed in. Go ahead and get the fender pulled out here. that back into place. I'm gonna go ahead and latch our fender back down. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we're gonna bring our grill over. We're gonna set that here for now so we can plug in our side markers. Grab that side marker cable we left to the side earlier. Again, we're gonna make sure that we line up the two arrows to make sure the keyways are matched. Tighten down our screw to make these waterproof. Tuck that in. All right, we're gonna line our grill back up. Make sure all of the clips are pushed in. All right, we're gonna put our four 10 millimeters back in. And we're gonna put our core support panel back on. Go ahead and get that intake locked into place. And now we just have to put our push clips back in and we're good to go. All right, so as you can see, these headlights are extremely easy to install and are also a great way to add that signature Oracle lighting style while keeping a more traditional look for your Bronco. As you can see behind me, we have a ton of cool new products on the way for the Bronco, so be sure to check out oraclelights.com to stay updated.